بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علی علی و صحبی و سلم مبد احبت فی اللہ continuing on in our study of هذه دعوتنا و عقیدتنا بای امام مقبل من هذه الوادعی اللہ يرحمه and we were speaking about the importance of the creed of Ahl al-Sunnati wal-Jama'ah, especially with regards to the uh, Immat al-Muslimin, that the, regarding the leaders of the Muslims, that Ahl al-Sunnah believes that even a wicked ruler should not be fought against and rebelled against. Imam Muqbil said, Rahmatullah alayhi, La nara al-khuruj ala al-hukam al-Muslimin. مهما كانوا مسلمين ولا نرى الانقلابات سببا للاصلاح بل لافساد المجتمع so the imam said rahmatullah alayh that we don't believe in fighting against the muslim ruler <coughs> as long as they remain uh, muslims and we do not see making revolt or rebellion or coups or revolution uh, we do not believe that that is a reason for causing rectification in the community but rather we th- believe that that is a source of destruction and misguidance in the community then the sheikh said amma hukam hukam adin فَنَرَى قَاتِلِهِمْ وَاجِبًا حَتَّى يُتُوبُوا مِنَ الْإِلْحَادِ وَمِنَ الْإِشْتِرَاقِيَةِ إِشْتِرَاقِيَةِ وَمِنْ دَعْوَةِ النَّاسِ إِلَى عِبَادَةِ لِنِنْ وَالْمَارْكْسِ وَغَيْرِهِمَا مِنَ زُعْمَا الْكُفْرِ So the Imam also mentioned that this was a fitna during his time and probably at the time of Uh, writing this treatise, he said, as for the ruler of Aden, the leader of Aden, because Yemen was divided into uh, two parts. It was the south of Yemen, Aden in those places, was ruled by communists and had remote and so forth. So it was the communist socialist groups that ruled that part of, uh, of Yemen. So he said, we believe in fighting them. We believe fighting them is an obligation until they repent from their apostasy or their heresy uh, which is communism or socialism and from calling people to worship Lenin and Marx and other than them from the leaders of disbelief and regarding this uh, the imam brought quite a bit of uh, adillah from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we've mentioned some and some of the other adillah with regards to uh, respecting the Muslim rulers and not rebelling and fighting against them is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said خَيَارَ أَئِمَّتُكُمَ الَّذِينَ تُحِبُّونَهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَكُمْ وَيُصَلُّونَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَتَصَلُّونَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَشِرَارَ أَئِمَّتُكُمَ الَّذِينَ تَبْغَضُونَهُمْ وَيَبْغَضُونَكُمْ وَتَلْعَلُونَهُمْ وَيَلْعَلُونَكُمْ قِيلْ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أَفَلَا نُنَابِذَهُمْ بِالصَّيْفِ بِالصَّيْفِ فَقَالَ لَا مَا أَقَامُ فِيكُمْ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِذَا رَأَيْتُمْ مَنْ وَلَاتُكُمْ شَيْئًا تَقْرَهُونَهُ فَقْرَوْهُ عَمَلُهُ وَلَا نُنَازِعُ يَدٍ مِنْ طَاعَةٍ مُتَفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ This is the hadith of Awf bin Malik رضي الله تعالى عنه that is uh, agreed upon in, in Bukhari and Muslim where the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that the best of your leaders are those that you love and they love you and you greet them and they greet you And the worst of the leaders are those who you hate uh, who you uh, who you hate them and they hate you and 
you curse them and they curse you. And then one of the companions meant, said, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, should we rebel against them with the sword? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, No, as long as they establish the prayer. And if you see something from your the one who rules over you that you dislike, then dislike it, dislike his deeds, and do not rebel, do not take your hand from obedience to him, meaning do not rebel against him. That right there is a nas surih. Illustrating for us the minhaj of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, that even if you dislike something, even if you see something haram from the leader, of course those people in, in authority should advise them. And power and manzil, who have the ability to advise the leader, and that the leader would might listen to, then they should advise them. But it shows us that we do not disobey the Muslim ruler as long as they're still Muslim. And with regards to this, some of the nusus from the Salaf of this Ummah, like Imam uh, at Tahawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, "Wala nural safe ala ahad min." Ummah to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam illa man wajib alayhi al-saif wa la nara khuruj ala a'immatina wa wulat al-umurina wa in jaru wa la nad'u ilayhim wa la nunazi'u yaddin min ta'atihim this is powerful this shows us also the aqidah and creed and minhaj of ahl sunnah and how we differ from the khawarij and other extremists Imam Tahawi said he said we do not see uh, we do not hold that it is permissible to raise the sword against anyone from the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, unless it is someone that it becomes an obligation to fight against. And we do not see rebelling against our leaders and the uh, our various leaders and imams if they are even if they are wicked. And we don't, nor is it permissible to supplicate against them or to be to disobey them. So this shows us again, this is the Aqeed of Ahl Sunnah. Abu Qilada, rahimahullah ta'ala said, Ahl al-Ahwa aftaraku fil asma wa ajtama'u fi saif ruahu ruahu ala lakai wal ajuri wa sanadhu sahih in this this is also uh, from abu qilada one of our salaf and he said and this also illustrates for us the creed of ahl sunnah and the minhaj of ahl sunnah he said the people of desires uh, they are divided or they have different names they're divided in their names and in, in what you call them their various names or their various sects and groups that you call them by but they come together with a sword this is also something you'll find in many of the narrations of the Salaf that they mention that there is not a group from Ahl Bida every Bida leads to uh, some type of Khuruj Al-Hukam, that every type of innovation and every group of innovators and sect, that they all have disobedience and their bid'ah leads to the bid'ah of the Khawarij. Letting us know that many of the groups, especially the early sects and even the groups now in sects today, that you'll find many of them, that even if they don't openly openly declare takfir of the rulers or fighting the rulers but you'll, you'll it, it'll most likely manifest itself through statements uh, and through uh, their encouragement to disobey the rulers you'll find that all of their creeds and and I want to make this to be that you'll find this a lot with the Hizbiyin you'll find a lot of people their Aqidah in general is that the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah and their Minhaj in general is the Minhaj of Ahl Sunnah but they go astray on some Masail and when you make a taftish, if you go into uh, and further pressing to understand what they believe, or it always seems to manifest itself. I know many people who I thought were du'at of the sunnah, 
But when you talk to them and you find out who some of their ulama were, some of their ulama were some of the biggest hizbis and biggest tikfiri uh, ulama, that they respect them, they love them. And then they'll make statements, oh, uh, such and such is okay, the leaders are like this, and we and, and really it's permissible in this way to rebel against the, the leaders, or there are no Muslim rulers. You'll hear all these kind of statements from them. And this shows you that the bid'ah, that it leads to the bid'ah is safe. That the the innovation that you'll find, even amongst many of the hizbis, and, and, and I'm talking about those who are closest to us, those who have almost identical creed. We have the same creed with regards to al-asma'i wa sifat, the same creed with regards to iman, the same creed with regards to many masail, but there'll just be some of those masail, especially when it comes to the leaders, especially when it comes to khuruj al hukam and these kind of things, you'll see they go astray, and you'll see they make takfir, or you see they make takfir of all the, the Muslim rulers. They say there are none. And they, or they'll say there is no Muslim state except for the Islamic state or something crazy like this, which makes no sense. It goes against the nusus. It goes against um, it goes against what the ulama of Ahl Sunnah uh, see as far as what's based upon Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Dawah and Creed of Ahl Sunnah. Another uh, benefit we can we can gain from this is and from the Hadith. Um, uh, especially the 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 what Imam Matahawi mentioned is that he said also, "Wala uh, nadu alayhim." Imam Tahawi also said, he mentioned that we also don't supplicate against the ruler. That's very, very important. And in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that makes, that uh, affirms for us, because that's where these the, these Messiah of Creed and Minhaj, they come from, from Kitab wa Sunnah, that we find the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi also mentioned that the worst of leaders are those who you curse them and they curse you. So letting us know that it's not from the creed of Ahl Sunnah to curse and speak ill of the leaders, to curse them, to uh, criticize them, and to supplicate supplicate against them. And these are even, you'll find some of the Salaf, I believe uh, there's a narration of on Hassan al-Basri and some of the other Salaf, it's mentioned, where the meaning is that if I had one dua, that was to be accepted. One supplication, I would supplicate it for the ruler. Because with the rectification of the ruler comes the rectification of the society. So this is the, the general meaning of that athar, an athar of the salaf, which sets a qa'idah, it sets a precedence for us. That we have this precedence in this qa'idah. Mustinid al dalil coming from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet the Prophet ﷺ said, hearing and obeying the Muslim ruler in that which you love and that which you dislike, as long as they're not disobedient to Allah. Because if they're disobedient to Allah, then you there's no hearing and obedience, meaning no hearing and obedience in that issue that they were they called you to, which is disobedience. For example, if the leader says, you must take riba, you must take interest, then you don't take interest because Allah has made war on those people who take interest. So you don't take interest even if the Muslim authority has uh, ordered you to do so. He's ordered you to do that haram. In that haram, you do, don't disobey him. But in all the other commands that agree with the Sharia, meaning they don't contradict the Quran and the Sunnah, they don't tell you to do the uh, haram uh, over the halal, then those things you obey them in. So this is very, very important, and this is something that we don't see from the Ahl Takfir and the Khawarij and the uh, and, and the Takfiris and so forth, that they don't make this distinguishment. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.